Hi guys, so today I'll be covering another finance current affair. We know that uh, India is planning to issue first sovereign bonds. So the topic that we'll be covering today in our finance current affair is of sovereign borrowing. Do subscribe to our channel if you like my video, press the bell icon and this will be beneficial for those preparing for RBI and SEBI 2019 examinations. So let's start with this. So the current affair is developing countries face the problem of original sin, whereas developed nations enjoy twin benefits from the situations. Consider the below statements which of the following statements are correct. So four options have been given, four statements have been given and you have to analyze each one of them to find the correct answer. First statement says that developed nations benefit from the depreciation of the developing countries' currency. Second says developed nations benefit from the appreciation of the developing countries' currency. Third is the developed countries immune from the currency risk and fourth is developing countries immune from the currency risk. So, this topic is really important and questions could be asked from this news. Such type of current affairs can be asked so you have to get the knowledge of that what is problem of original sin and how is it the twin benefit for a developed nation whereas it is a problem for the developing countries. So you have to have a keen understanding on this topic. So let's start with this. So in this document, I'll be covering what is sovereign debt, classification of the sovereign debt, ways for sovereign borrowing, reasons and impact of sovereign borrowing, problem of original sin, and then the criticism. So let's start with this. The topic for today is sovereign borrowing. So the first question is, what is a sovereign debt? So we know that any debt is a claim in which one party owes to another party so in case of sovereign debt countries come into play and it is a debt which is issued by the national government in a foreign currency in order to finance their uh, issuing countries growth and development so sovereign debt could be of two types it could be of either a internal debt or an external debt so internal debt means if a country suppose india raises money from the people of India itself. So if the debt is owed to the lenders who are within the country that is termed as internal debt. Whereas if India borrows from outside countries from foreign countries then that will be termed as external debt. So the classification is clear between the internal debt and the external debt. So basically in this document we will be covering the external debt because problem of original sin is associated with the external debt and India is planning to issue its first sovereign bond from in the foreign currency from the foreign countries and that is also an, a kind of external debt. So let's move on ways for sovereign borrowing. So how could a country borrow from outside? So there may be many ways but two of them are firstly it is sovereign bonds. So if like a normal bond which a company raises or a debenture where it raises money and people invest in its bond. Similarly in case of a country sovereign bonds are the bonds which are issued by a country's central government to raise money from outside India in foreign currency to finance its developing countries needs growth and development. Mm. So if the credibility of the issuer country is good and stable then only sovereign bonds can be raised because if the credibility is not good then who will take the sovereign bonds of a country. If there is a country A and B so suppose the country A has a poor credit rating whereas country B has a good credit rating so everyone will opt to buy country B sovereign bonds because of its good credit rating because of its credibility because of its stability so everyone will buy country B's bonds whereas country A's bonds will be bought by very risk loving investors because 
as the there is poor credit rating so obviously the interest rate offered by country a to compensate its poor credit rating will be high so very risk loving investors will be investing in country a but whereas in general countries b sovereign bonds would be more popular than countries a now second option is when a country directly borrows from the international multilateral organization so there is a news that india uh, is taking concessional loans from world bank from adb to invest to promote its green energy sector so again if the credibility of the country is not stable so if it could not resort to the sovereign bonds then it can go for direct Uh, borrowing from the international multilateral organizations because these agencies these organizations are formed to help the developing countries also developing countries do not go do not prefer to go to imf because of its biasness towards the developed nations so borrowing from the world bank is an example where which i am talking about that is directly borrowing from international multilateral organizations who helps the developing countries to promote its growth and developmental needs now india if i talk about india india is planning to resort to both the ways of external borrowing that is sovereign bonds its first sovereign bonds as uh, nirmala sitharaman our finance minister has indicated that in the union budget that india will raise its first sovereign bonds and direct borrowing from world organizations that is concessional loans taken from adb from world bank for green energy sector now the question which arises here is that in the previous section i have talked about that the credibility of a country if it is good then it will resort to sovereign bonds as it can get the sovereign bonds easily the investors for sovereign bonds easily but if the credibility is not good then it may have to resort to the direct borrowing from the international multilateral organizations so the question here is that how to check the credibility and stability of a country so for this there are credit rating agencies so three credit rating agencies which are international are moody snp and fitch so these credit rating agencies uh, rate the countries on the basis of various parameters so the credit rating are very reliable so the credit ratings assigned by these agencies could be looked into then we have the economic policies in a country that whether they are favorable or they are unfavorable then we have trade tensions which may hamper the flow of funds in future for example uh, us and china are facing trade tensions so as us has banned goods from china so a case may be uh, for example if us and china have banned the capital flow so that will obviously affect the borrowing and lending mechanism between us and china so this is what i'm talking about here that the trade tensions that can hamper the flow of funds in future and then we have history of failures that uh there were many crises like asian crisis crisis or the financial crisis in us so which all countries were impacted by these crises and how were they able to overcome it so if a particular country has failed in the previous crisis have been a um, target in the previous crisis then such country has a lower standing than the other country not, which which have not failed in the crisis so a interesting point to note here is that india has never defaulted on any of its dues in the past even though there was asian crisis even though there was financial crisis but india yeah. stood strong and it was not adversely affected by any of these crises it stand immune now the next topic we are going to do is why government is resorting to the sovereign borrowing so the reason which have been given are to prevent the crowding of, out of the private investment demand so what does it mean that this is india so there is private investment demand and there is public investment demand but now as we can see 
that the investment demands are going down as there are trade tensions which surrounds every country so in order to protect its private investment demand the indian government has decided that its public investment demand that is the government's investment demand will be financed by outside borrowings by sovereign borrowing so that the private investment demand could be met from the domestic money then we have reason 2 beneficial impact on the demand situation for government securities so as india has a good past record so it thinks the indian government thinks that if it will raise the bonds from outside that is sovereign bonds then the demand of these bonds will rise which will benefit the indian government in raising money at cheaper cost the next section we are going to talk about is what is the long term effect of borrowing from the foreign countries so we know that a country issues sovereign bond in foreign currency so then they face the problem of original sin so problem of original sin is faced by developing countries and if a country directly borrows from the international multilateral organizations then a poor credit rating could be assigned to so if a country is borrowing from outside the purpose of the loan is very important to see because if the type of loan taken by the government is to address the financial distress then a poor credit rating could be assigned there could be downgrades in the credit ratings but if the loan taken is that is for example in india the loan taken is the concessional loans which india is seeking from adb and world bank is for the green sector so if the loan is for the development of the country then there will be no adverse impact to the credit rating so the type of loan matters and it will decide that the that if the credit rating would go down or not now as i have talked about problem of original sin so this is a very important topic that you need to understand so let's start with the problem of original sin so as the name suggests this is an original sin so what does it mean that original sin refers to the inability of the developing nations to borrow in their own currency and if i'm saying developing nations that means that the developed nations could borrow in their own currency but in case of developing nations they have to borrow in the foreign currency so why the developed nations are not willing to lend the developing countries in their local currency so let's look at this thing that there is a risk of depreciation against the developed countries currency for example if us which is the developed nation and india the developing one if us have lent to india in inr that is for example US, us has given 100 rupees to india when the exchange rate was of 1 dollar is equals to 50 rupees but if there is depreciation of the developing countries because in the problem of original sin this assumption is implied that the developing countries would face the risk of depreciation whereas developed nations will not face this risk of currency depreciation so if india faces the risk of depreciation for example 1 dollar is equals to 100 rupees so when us has given 100 rupees to india that is it has given 2 dollars but now when india will repay back at the exchange rate of 1 dollar to 100 rupees us will get only 1 dollar so this risk of depreciation will affect the developed countries performance and will reduce the developed countries amount so basically from 2 dollars to 1 dollar because india will return 100 rupees so 100 rupees earlier it was worth 2 dollar but now after the depreciation of indian rupees 100 rupees is worth 
one dollar. Now the next point is that there is instability in the developing economy. No clear economic policies are there. So to avoid these types of instability, developed countries are not willing to lend developing countries in their local currency. So the another question which arises here is that if developing country faces a problem of original sin, that is they cannot borrow in their own currency but rather they have to borrow in the foreign currency. So why do they borrow? Why do they still borrow from the developed nations? So the answer is that as monetary credibility is low in the developing countries, so obviously the interest rates in the domestic currency will be high. So either the developing countries could choose the currency risk or they could choose the risk of borrowing in very expensive terms. So either they could borrow from their own internal domestic economy, that is they could either go for the internal debt or they could go for the external debt as I have given you the classification between the two earlier. Now the developed economies are immune from the problem of original sin and the twin benefits are there. So, so this point is very interesting to note here that the developed economies enjoys twin benefits here. So what are these twin benefits? We will discuss this here in this section. So as I have explained you that the risk of depreciation is there in the developing economies. So that is the reason that developed nations do not want to lend in the developing countries currency. So what they do? They lend the developing countries in their own currency. For example, they will lend $100, US will lend $100 to India. When the exchange rate is of $1 to rupees 50. So they are, US is giving 5000 rupees worth of purchasing power in Indian rupees to India. Now at the time of repayment, suppose the rupee depreciates from $1 to say 100 rupees. So when the Indian government will pay to the US, it will give back $100 but now this $100 is worth 10,000 rupees worth of purchasing power. So as you can see that as US has lent 5,000 rupees worth of purchasing power and it is receiving 10,000 rupees of purchasing power. So this is the reason that developed economies want to give loans to the developing nations in the in their own currency. So the real terms of debt of developing countries would rise now, because, because earlier also Indian government owed $100 to US. Now also after depreciation India owes $100 to US. But the real terms, the debt in the real terms have gone up from 5000 rupees to 10,000 rupees because of the depreciation of the Indian rupees. So this is the benefit that you, the US is taking because it increases the purchasing power of the developed nations. Now the next point is here is the developed countries easily get the lenders for their sovereign borrowing as their economy is stable and they face no currency risk. Because if US wants to borrow, suppose it, it borrows $100 as we have discussed that developed nations do not faces a problem of original sin so thereby they can get the loans in their own currency. So if it borrows $100 even if the dollar depreciates or dollar appreciates, US has to give back $100 irrespective of the fact that dollar will depreciate or dollar will appreciate. So they faces no currency risk. Now what are the criticisms of this sovereign borrowing and lending mechanism? Earlier many crises were there like Asian crisis and India stood immune in all these crises and it was not impacted. So as Asian countries borrowed in foreign currency and because of their local currency depreciation 
a series of failure was there so the crisis started from thailand and india has largely been immune because india did not borrow abroad in foreign currencies earlier but now the situation is that india is planning to raise funds from sovereign borrowings so if any crisis happens then now india will not be immune so this is the first criticism here the second criticism is that if india issues a small amount of debt denominated in foreign currency now then at future stage government will be tempted to increase its foreign currency borrowing and the consequences may be disastrous in the long run so i have discussed two criticisms with you now after understanding the concept of problem of original sin twin benefits and the basic concepts like what is sovereign debt and what are the its classifications now we are in a better position to answer the question that i have discussed with you so the question says that developing countries face the problem of original sin now we know what original sin is and whereas developed nations enjoy twin benefits from the situation now we also know that what two benefits the developed nations are enjoying that is the risk of depreciation of the developing country and the currency risk that i have explained it to you now consider the below statements which of the following statements are correct so developed nations benefit from the depreciation of the developing countries currency this is correct statement because developed nations they benefit from the risk of depreciation of the developing countries currency as their purchasing power in the depreciating currencies terms will increase the second is developed nations benefit from the appreciation of the developing countries currency so this is wrong then we have developed countries immune from the currency risk so this is correct because developed country has to repay back what it has taken in its own currency even if its currency appreciate or depreciate would no longer matter to the developed country economy the fourth statement says developing country is immune from the currency risk so this is again wrong because developing country faces a risk of depreciation so after analyzing the statements we can say that option a the statements a and c are correct so option number b is the correct answer do subscribe to our channel for further videos i hope you enjoyed this and you were able to understand the concept in the much clearer way